Before we get started, I do want to introduce myself. My name is Sunday Gardner. I am your online travel boss. So welcome for the people who are joining me new. Um, welcome, 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 and thank you for joining me live. And again, if you do catch this in the replay, do not forget to push hashtag replay or do not forget to hit the subscribe button if you're watching this in the replay. All right, so that's who I am. But today what we're going to be talking about is what? Hold on. I wrote it down. What are we going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about three things that are really killing your travel business, right? We've alluded to some of those things that we've talked about, but we're going to specifically be talking about those things that are killing your travel business and are preventing you from seeing the continued success that maybe you've had early on or the success that you are chasing after. So, but before we go into the buzz killers and the things that we can do to fix that, what I'd like to talk to you and sort of paint a picture for you is what a successful travel business looks like. So you guys ready for that? All right. So number one, here is what success in your travel business looks like. So if you are not experiencing this, you absolutely are in the right space. But really, I'm talking to our agency owners who've been in business for some time. Maybe they're in a bit of a rut and they're really desperately wanting to grow their business bigger than it ever has been before. Even despite the fact that we're in a pandemic, they want to position themselves to be ready for the floodgates to open, right? So newbies, I want you to hang on. I'll be talking to you at the end, but really I'm talking to the agency owners that have been in business for a while. Okay, so this is what your successful travel business should look like now. And if you're a newbie, I want you to pay attention because this is applicable to you because this is what you want to strive for. Number one, success looks like you know who your audience is. You know who your ideal client is. You're not trying to market sell to the masses. You know specifically who it is that you want to work with. If you're super clear about that, then that's what success is, right? You're not all over the place trying to talk to every, you know, person that's breathing and to sell travel to. You're super clear about who, what, who your audience is, what they need and what they want, right? That is what success looks like in your travel business. And the reason why that success occurs when you know your audience is simply put, you know who you're after, right? You're not trying to divide your time between, you know, people who are interested in weddings, people who are retired, people who are uh, family members with, you know, who have family with young children, right? Your focus is on one prize and that prize allows you to align your money, your time, everything about your business to that one purpose. And that's fulfilling the, that particular client's needs. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. Number two, success looks like you are focused on sales and marketing. You are not worried about ancillary activities that make you feel good, but don't get you to more sales, right? So you're focused on the right thing because you know who your client is and you're doing activities on a consistent basis that are going to move your sales numbers and ensure that you're closing clients, right? So success is I got a steady stream of clients coming in, right? Which then means I've got a steady stream of uh, sales coming in, right? I'm growing my sales. That is a consistent item that I can count on, right? There's not the hills and the valleys and the roller coaster of revenue because consistency is a part of the, the success that my business realizes, right? So that's a number two factor of what success looks like in your travel business. Number three is that your clients are your biggest fans, right? Like they love you. They like they, they think that you're the bomb.com. Like there's no question in their mind that when they think of travel, they think of you because you are amazing in their eyes, right? So that's what success and successful travel business owners have in their business and or what you're striving for. So let's now jump into the buzz killers to that success. Now that we've set the groundwork, we understand what success looks like. Let's talk about what the buzz killers are you guys ready for the buzz killers all right so the thing that i want to do before we talk about the buzz killers is i want to talk about like you know we're going to really in this next sort of section of this training really talk about what's happening in your business maybe the activities that you're working on and then i'm going to give you some 
uh, insight to resolution. So it's going to be like, here's the thing that you've got that's going on or doing in your business. Here's the resolution for that and some tips around that. So you're really going to want to get some paper and a pen. This is going to be power punched full of information and tips for you to be able to, at the end of this training, take some action. Hopefully you guys are ready for that. Number one, Buzz killer is, this is for newbies and existing people. Maybe you jumped into becoming a travel professional, business owner, you decided to start your business. Maybe you're in the business for greater than a year, because those are the people that I wanna be talking to today. And you continue to work your business without a clear audience to find. Meaning, I was just talking to someone, I think yesterday, or maybe even was today, a uh, prospective client, and they were telling me that they are posting on uh, their, uh, I think they have a group, and they're posting in their group packages every single week, new packages, new packages, new packages, right? All over the place, right? So they're desperately trying to find new packages every week to post because that's the environment that they've created. But their audience is not, it's not packages based on what their audience is interested in. It's packages that they're thinking of to try and get their audience interested, right? That's a big difference. You trying to figure it out on the fly versus already understanding what your audience wants and needs, right? So if you are a business owner that's jumped, you've started your business, you don't know who your audience is, and you continue to work that way, that is going to kill your business long term. It's going to be very difficult for you to predict what your sales are. It's going to be very difficult for you to predict what your clients' uh, needs are because you're chasing after everybody. You're not focused on your client, so you can't speak to them. You can't fulfill them. You are trying to be a jack of all trades, right? And I don't really like jack of all trades. I don't know who Jack is. I don't know why he's, uh, you know, he's trying to be an expert at everything, but that is not what we want to do, right? If you jumped in your business, and oftentimes what happens, it, what happens is you make a decision. Most of the people that come inside of this group, maybe 80, 90% of the people that come were recruited by either a host agency or some opportunity and they found out that they could take this love of travel and they could create a business out of it, right? And they were probably told or you were told that as a result of that recruitment, all you need to do is just start selling it to anyone who's interested, your friends, your family, everyone, right? You can sell travel to. But the killer in your businesses is that without specializing and identification of who your ideal audience is, right, you become chasing after everybody, right? And then you end up working with people that you potentially don't want to work with, right? You potentially have to go after suppliers that are not who you really want to learn about or want to know about, right? All for the chase of the dollar as opposed to chasing and solving people's problems or providing people's dreams based on the type of travel you want to sell. All right. So that's the difference. So let's talk about what the resolution to that is. Right. So the problem is you've jumped and you continue to operate your business without a clear identification of who it is that you want to work with. You don't know who it is that you want to work with, nor do you know who they are. And, and, and it's not even just the who so some people may say, hey, yeah, I know that I want to be a weddings destination specialist, right? I want to specialize in weddings. But you've done no research about the type of bride you're looking for, the type of couple that you're looking for, right? You don't know really what it is that they are struggling with. You've done no research. You've done no investigation about your competitors in terms of what they're offering. So you're not even probably offering services that could get you paid. You're focused on trying to sell the destination as opposed to selling your services, right? But if you had done some research about what your competitors are doing, right, and how you can set yourself apart from them and to understand how you could be selling services, not just the travel side, right, based on what the industry uh, and what the market will allow for, you're missing the boat, right? So you're, you're, you're focused on trying to sell sandals instead of selling your services as a wedding expert and destination and coordinating the whole thing, right? So you're missing out on dollars. You're missing out on understanding what your brides are really looking for and needing in the whole uh, determination of their wedding destination, right? So you may still know who it is, but you don't know them. 
End of story. You don't know what they need, what they want, and what they desire in a service professional, which is you. And as a result of that, you're not showing up delivering that and probably missing significant opportunity, not only in revenue and services, but the opportunity to create a winning, raving fan in the future, right? So how can you fulfill their needs if you don't know what they are? Right. So that's part of what the resolution is. It's not just about understanding who you want to work with, but it's understanding your client or prospective client intimately that you understand what their needs and what their wants are from you, the travel professional. And I believe you. I want you to believe me when I say that people who utilize travel agents, it's not just to find them the best deal. It's to do more than that. Right. And what is it that you need to do more of? Right. You know, in a post COVID travel world, I can guarantee you that our clients and our future clients are going to be looking for way more advocacy, way more protection, notification, you know, uh, peace of mind in the travel experience and that they know somebody is looking after them in the event that things go awry while they're gone and they need to quickly change plans or they quickly, you know, they need to figure out what the hell this new interpretation of whatever the new law land or whatever. Think about the people who are out of the country right now. And the CDC two weeks ago released that there was a mandated COVID. What if they were on a two week trip and they come back and they didn't know because their travel agent hasn't notified. They, maybe they didn't have a travel agent and they didn't, you know, they didn't, they found out and now they're panicked thinking about how are they going to get this test before they can get into the United States, right? Maybe the crossover time was, you know, they're already out of country and now they're going to come back to the United States. And while an advocate's going to help them resolve that problem, right? Right. That's what I'm talking about in terms of needs and wants. Can you fulfill it? I'm just talking post COVID, right? These are just sort of COVID related issues. But when it comes to if you're specializing in weddings or if you're specializing in, a, you know, a specific type of travel, what unique needs do your clients have? And do you understand that? Right. So that's the problem. What's the resolution? Right. So we want you to stop doing that. And how do you do that? You need to do market research. Period. End of story. You need to start to understand who your client is and what they need. And so some of the things that are included in market research are as follows, right? Interviews, right? Have you interviewed your prospective client, you know, not to try and sell them um, something, but from the perspective of trying to gain knowledge about what it is that they want, the language that they use, right? So market research is a critical step. Not only when you start your business, but anytime you want to introduce a new service, anytime you want to do something that you've not done before in your business, or you want to even improve it, right? So it's an ongoing thing that you should be doing. Like, do you know who your top three competitors are in the space that you've decided to specialize in? Many of you probably don't. You don't know what your competition is doing. And as a result, you don't know what your competition is doing. So how is it that you differentiate yourself from them if you don't know what they're doing, right? Okay, number two, hopefully before we go, let me just make sure we understand what market research is and we know when you should be doing it. So I want to reiterate those two points I I put here. So market research is actually going out in the market, right? And doing research specific, that can be uh, interviews, market interviews, that can be looking at industry trends, that can be looking at, you know, understanding what your niche is and then understanding what your competitors are doing in that same space. That is what market research. So it's literally going out in the marketplace, looking at your particular specialty and seeing what's going on. And understanding that so that when it comes to your position, the positioning of your business and you as the expert in that business, you understand how you fit. Right. So again, I hopefully that makes sense. Now, when do you do it? I mentioned this before. I just want to reiterate. You do this when you get ready to introduce a new product or service. So at the beginning of your business, right? And then you continually do it to ensure that you're not missing any trends, right? Let me give you an example of a company, not travel related, that didn't do market research ongoing and is now out of business, Blockbuster, 
right? I did a, uh, I read a story about Blockbuster and the demise of Blockbuster. I think it was a case study a couple of years ago. And Blockbuster, you know, they had the market locked down when it came to video rentals, right? But they were not in touch with their client base, right? And the trends that were happening. So what happened? Netflix, they pretty much put them out of business, right? Because the trend was being able to watch movies on demand. So Netflix, I don't remember if you remember back in the day, Netflix started with a membership where they would send you videos. And you remember you had those little envelopes and you sent the videos back and you got the ability to watch videos on your own space without the rental fees. You just paid the membership and they automatically sent your videos, right? That was a shift in the market, right? And Blockbuster did didn't keep up with that shift because they weren't continually doing market research and now they're out of business. What now is happening in our marketplace that is going to require your travel business to shift as a result of this pandemic? right? As a result of now a change in arms, we've got a new president, right? Is there anything that we need to be aware of and shift our business to accommodate our clients better so that we don't miss the boat and we're, we look up and we're out of business, right? This is the kind of stuff that you need to be doing when it comes to market research. You need to understand what's happening from a trend perspective. What do your clients want, right? And I would tell you, we are all online businesses. And if you are not accessible online and you call yourself an online business, what are you doing? Right? You're not a brick and mortar. How do people get a hold of you? How do they access you? What the trend is from a user perspective is people want access to their service providers. So that's you right? How accessible are you to your clients, right? I'm not saying you have to be accessible 24 by, 24 by 7, but you need to be super clear what that availability is and how they get in contact with you, right? Phone, email. It's it's additionally also amazing to me when um, I talk to prospective uh, travel clients, not travel business owners, but travel clients. And they say that, yeah, I reached out to so-and-so travel agent and they never got back to me. I'm like, what? What do you mean they never got back to you? I'm like, that's a foreign concept to me. There's so much consumption in our organization around touch points that a new person could probably think we overkill touch them when they come into our ecosystem. Same thing with you. When somebody comes to your website, when they come to your Facebook page, when they come to you, like, how are you touching them and making sure that you stay in constant communication with them? That you are now like, like you literally are sort of online stalking them in a good way, right? Right. From a business perspective, like, are you accessible to your clients and is that what they need? You need to know that, right? So that's what market research. Hopefully you guys get that number one, but that's where we're talking about when we talk about making sure you understand the market. You don't want to die because you don't understand what trends are going on. All right. Now COVID. In a post-COVID travel world, we are going to have to understand what needs our clients have, right, legally, right, and also as a result of the legal mandates that are going to probably be imposed on travelers in the in the near future, right, like mandatory COVID tests if they want to travel, right, what is our responsibility to fulfill that and how do we do that and make it easier for our client? All right, number two, you... So this is number two buzz killer to your business is that you are focused on the wrong activities. They don't lead to the big C, right? And the big C is conversions, right? Or clients, right? Whatever you want to call the C, but the activities that you are doing do not directly lead you to the big C. And that's clients or conversions, right? And so what do I mean by that, right? So if you're a new business owner or you're a business owner and marketing's not your stick, you're like conversions. What the hell is she talking about conversions? What am I converting? Well, you're converting strangers or non-buyers to buyers, right? How do you convert 
people who get introduced to your business into clients? How do you get them from a interested party into a buying party, right? That's what I mean by conversion. What's your process by which to do that? So for those who have been with me a while, you're familiar with my ARC system and the ARC system is attract, relate and convert. And that is the process that we should be doing when it comes to sales and marketing, right? We should be attracting people. We should be building relationships and then we should be, uh, you know, providing offers for them to buy, right? So we are converting. And so I want you to start with the C of the ARC process in your mind. How many clients do you want? If you had to put a monthly number, how many clients do you want per month? Paid clients, not, you know, people who are thinking about working with you, people who paid clients. How many paid clients? Is it 10, 15, 20, 30, 50, 60, whatever, whatever number? How many clients do you want to work with per month? Have you guys thought about it? Do you even have a number? Do you have a number? If you don't have a number, say, you know, TBD, like you don't have a number, you don't know what that is, right? Because that's the problem most of the time is that you you don't even know what you don't know. Like you, you are in business and you're not operating with numbers, right? You don't know how many people you want to have. You're guessing. You're just like, you know, I don't know, two or three. I want two or three sales per month, right? When it comes to focusing on the right activities, the first activity you should focus on is understanding the number of clients you want per month. You need to know what that number is, right? So here are the things that you need to be knowing about those clients in order for you to then determine the tasks that you work on. Now we have a number of clients we want. Then the second thing that you need to know is how many discovery calls or calls do you need to have Quotes do you need to have? Whatever your sales process is to get to clients. Do you know that number? Do you, do you guys know that number, right? So let's just say that you do quotes to get clients, right? So your process is somebody makes a request, you do a quote, maybe you collect a fee, and then you, you know, some percentage of those then become full clients. Now, if you're really good at what you do, you know, if they're paying a fee, you should have a pretty high conversion from quotes to uh, clients, right? Do you know what that number is? Do you know how many quotes you need to do per month in order to get your clients? Do you know that, All right? Um, and if you don't know, that means you're probably not working on activity that's going to get you that number, and that's the problem, right? Right. So the idea is, is if you want to get to clients, what is the step before getting clients that you need to know the number for? And then what's on your books today? So if quoting is your step before purchase, right? How many of you have quotes on your book or have a goal for quotes that you want to be giving per month? No, probably none of you. Probably you don't have a number for how many quotes you're doing. And instead, you're working on building a website, right? Instead, you're working on posting aimless posts on social media, right? When you should be working on how many quotes do I need to get this month? And am I doing the right activities that are going to get me quotes? Does that make sense? Like, is there an aha moment that's happening for you guys uh, right now? Like, do you understand what it takes for you to get to 20. And the first step is to understand the step before you get to 20, how many do you need, right? So if you know that you want 20 clients and to get to 20 clients, you need to provide quotes, then my question is, are you working on getting quotes and fulfilling quotes as your number one activity in your business right now? Yes or no? So I'm not interested if you have a website. I'm interested in are you working on activities that are going to directly get you sales and the number one activity for most of you is quoting, right? It's taking requests and fulfilling the quote so that you can then give them that so they can buy, right? Are you doing that? So for those who are group leaders, right? What's the thing that's going to get a group leader to buy from you, right? Or to decide to use you as a, uh, as a fulfiller for their group? Is it, is it proposals, right? What is the thing right before sale that you need to be doing? And are you working on doing it? And do you have a process in place to make it happen, Captain? 
right? If the answer is no, you're not working on the right activity. So when I say most of you are working on your website, it's that is what feels good to us, right? So I got a lot of newbie people telling me, oh, or people who are in the business and they're saying, you know what, I'm in the middle of rebranding myself, I'm working on my website, and you know, and they tell me their number one problem is getting clients. And I'm like, well, how is your website gonna get you more clients? It feels good to have a nice, sexy website, but it's not a sales activity that's going to get you more clients. Working on paid ads to your website that goes to your booking page will get you more clients directly, but just generally working on your website isn't gonna get you more clients unless you're driving traffic to your clients, right? Does that make sense, right? So the activities that you're working on do not directly relate to you getting more clients. So now the step before getting quotes is leads, right? So how many leads do you need to get in order to get to your 100 people? You need 20, you want 20 clients. You need, you need to have given 20, you know, 100 quotes in order to get 20 clients, right? How many leads do you need to have coming in monthly to get to 100 uh, quotes, right? What's your conversion rate from leads to quotes, right? Do you know that? And are you chasing after getting leads? Or are you posting on social media random packages to a group of people that are not even your ideal client? What are you working on? What are the activities that you're working on that are going to get you to your goals, right? And so what I want to do is I want you to make this shift that you are a sales and marketing engine. And if you don't know what that means, that is what you need to be after. Getting the knowledge so that you can shift your mind from doing administrative, useless, aimless activities in your business to working on things that are really going to make a difference in how the success of your business is going to come to fruition right so hopefully that is making sense you're making that you're connecting the dots right we want 20 clients I need X number of quotes per month and in order to get X number of quotes I need X number of leads who are introduced to my business or existing people who have not bought that I'm creating an opportunity for them to do a booking request from right does that make sense? Hopefully that that that's resonating with you guys and that's clicking, right? Is that we're not focused on the right things. We're focused on all this administrative hubbly goo, goobly ga, or whatever you want to call it, that makes us feel like really busy entrepreneurs, right? Because in this society, if you're busy, that means you're successful. And the reality, I call bullshit on that. I don't want to be busy and broke. I want to be not busy and rich, right? I want to be not busy and rich. Like, I don't want to be, I only want to work on the things that are going to get me and move the needle. And I want, I want somebody else on my team working on the other hubbly goo stuff that needs to get done, but is not something directly. Or I'm putting in a team of sales and marketing people and that's their focus, is they're focusing on moving my line, right? They're focusing on getting me leads, right? There are people that can work your system to get you new leads, right? And I'm not talking about buying leads. I'm not talking about buying, you know, the hopes of people that are your potential client, but I'm talking about really understanding your potential client, getting them into your ecosystem, into your process, and you working it, right? How do I get leads? How do I, how do I know who my market is, right? You know, I'm going to address that in just a minute, but these are all great questions because the important thing is, is that if you don't know that this is what you're focused on, then you're focused on things that don't get you what you need. And we just kind of go in circles, right? So you want clients, you want more money, you want more time, you want a better business, you want to be successful, you want to be fulfilling people's dreams and passions and all of that, but you're not doing the activities that are ever going to get you there, right? That's a, that's a freaking business killer, right? Number three. All right. So hopefully you guys understand number two, number three and the final one. And then I am going to skedaddle out of here. Because, you know, I've been throwing some fire. Are you guys getting some value out of this? Are you guys getting some value out of what we're talking about today and how you need to make some shifts in your business so that you can actually ensure that you are seeing success and not just busy work? I don't want to be a busy entrepreneur, unsuccessful right? And success is not driven by how many hours a day I'm working in this business, right? You know, I'm slaving my nine to five, I'm burning the midnight oil, you know, and I love, I always think it's funny because I used to be that, that, that entrepreneur, right? 
working a full-time job. I'm up at 2 a.m. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm working on stuff, right? I'm working on my website. I'm working on my post plan. You know, I'm working on images. I'm working on all this stuff. But all the while, I was avoiding having conversations with clients because I was scared to, to realize I was, one, I was, I was desperately scared to talk to people. Like I was, I'm a great, you know, you know, I'm very talkative. I don't have a problem talking, but I was scared to sell. I was scared to think of myself as a seller. So I was doing all these things that were non-sales activities that weren't getting me in front of my ideal clients. I wasn't having conversations, right? I was doing all this other stuff, right? That made me feel good, made me feel busy, but it wasn't making me money. Right. And the things that I thought were making me money, right? I was dibbling with my Facebook ads account. I could get leads all day long, right? But I wasn't building relationships, right? So, you know, I could make offers and I was selling a little bit, but I wasn't aggressively after it from a process perspective, right? So our organization wasn't aligned around the touch points, the relationship building, the conversion, right? We were not around even my own arc system, right? I was great at attracting. I was so, so good at conversion. I was okay at like peripheral relationships, right? I was okay with doing lives, but I wasn't offering anything at the end because I was like, no, I don't want to sound too salesy. No, be clear. I'm going to drop great value, but at the end of this, I am going to extend an opportunity to work with us and learn how to do all of these successful items inside of our program, right? There's no question about what I'm here to do, right? It's to get people and to help them have successful travel business. I understand our mission. My team understands their mission and hopefully you understand my mission, right? It is to make you successful. This training is just the iceberg, right? This is the things that you need to do, but the program teaches you how to do it, right? So that's where I want to make the difference. So when you come and you show up in your groups and you show up in your business, what are you doing to be a sales engine, a sales and marketing engine, right? Keep your eye on the ball. Don't be over there looking at the flies and the butterflies, right? Keep your eye on the ball. And the ball is your business and the products and services that you offer and positioning yourself as the expert to offer that. All right, number three. Number three is you're not focusing or allocating sig not significant amount of effort, right? Money, time, all of the above on client fulfillment. And let me talk about that. We spend a lot of time hustling to get clients, but we spend very little time keeping those clients, making them happy, making sure that the experience is seamless, making sure that they are fulfilled. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about the jerk client on the back end that you did everything you possibly could. And he, you couldn't please him. You know, if you, if you sent him to the palace, right with, you know, servants and butlers and all that, and still he wasn't happy here. She wasn't happy. I'm not talking about that, right? I'm talking about what is your fulfillment, not only your delivery of your service, right? Is it seamless, easy, consumable for your client? And do you have a follow-up process? And then how do you continue to keep that relationship hot and burning even after they've utilized that first service, right? Are your clients happy with what you've done? And if you don't know the answer to that, then how, how are they gonna become raving fans? <laughs> Like, how are they going to, how are they going to be talking about how amazing you are, right? If you don't have a process by which to not only do the work, but ensure that the work that you've done meets their needs above and beyond that, what they could have ever expected so that they become raving fans. Most of us don't spend any time on that at all. And that could be something that bites you in the ass later, right? So that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about too, is a, a, a big giant business killer is not having a fulfillment process, right? You have hazardly throw together the quote, right? And then you sit and you maybe don't even sit down and really meet with them and talk them through it and really sell them on the quote that you've done. You probably just kick it to them in email, right? That's not, that's not even, that's not even fulfillment. That's just like your, that's a broken sales process right there. But then now they even, you know, hap, you know, accidentally buy because you, you, they like the quote, right? And then that's probably it. Maybe you do a couple of check-ins with them before their trip and, and that's it. And then you want to know why you're not the bomb.com and you don't have testimonials. 
You don't have a process by which to make sure that the pulse, you know, and some of you will say, well, no, 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 you know, I send them an email to let them know and I send them their, their documents and, you know, and everything's cool and we're all good, right? But if you don't have testimonials and you don't even have a process by which to collect testimonials, right? It doesn't matter if they are good and they're, if, if you don't have a process by which to collect that, right? Get that or people aren't just giving it to you, right? How then do you have social proof? How then do you show to the world that you are the bomb.com, right? People need social proof in a social media society that we are in, right? Most people are not going to a brick and mortar store. They are not meeting you face to face, right? So that social proof that we have in the form of testimonials, in the, the form of accolades about how amazing you are and how you deliver their service, right? And what you're doing as a part of delivering your service and products to your client, right? That fulfillment process is critical so and also ensuring you have a feedback loop and we unfortunately as businesses don't have a process around that and what happens is we spend a lot of time trying to get the client but we don't spend any time trying to keep and then uh keep and make sure that they're fulfilled not only now but long term right so that is number three and so how do we fix number three so the number three resolution is you develop a process around fulfillment feedback loop, support, right? So there's a process by which you help support your clients, you uh, get feedback from your clients, and you deliver the service that they paid for, right? Above and beyond what they got, so they have an exceptional, right? An extraordinary experience when they work with you, right? Have a process to find around that. You spend dollars in that space, right? To ensure that that's happening and you, uh, want to make sure that they, 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 they become a part of your family, so to speak, an extended part of your family. So it's really about being intentional about your client fulfillment. So hopefully that makes sense. All right. Those are the three, the three, uh, the three bus killers, right? So we talked about a lot of stuff tonight. We talked about, you know, the importance of, of, you know, ensuring you understand what your sales process is and you're focused on that. You understand who your audience is. You do the market research. You got some people ask, how do you, how do you identify your market? Who is your clients, right? How do I get leads? What, what do I do with them when I have them, right? That's what our travel passions to profit program does. It defines a specific marketing strategy on getting clients in the travel business arena, right? How to get those clients, how to attract them, how to build relationships with them, and ultimately how to convert them. That's what I teach my clients. I'll see you next week. Talk to you soon. If you like this episode, then share it. Sharing is caring and don't keep it to yourself. Spread the word. Another way to support this channel is to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, or leave us a message. Join us inside of our free Facebook group, The Travel Boss Group. Better yet, if you think you need help, schedule your free travel business launch diagnostic call. Links are mentioned below. This has been Sunday Gardner, your online travel boss. See you again on the next episode of Online Travel Boss TV.